Hey fellow nerds, welcome back to D's Nerds. Today we're going to be talking about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Alright, before we get started today, I just want to remind you if you, that you, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and comment on what you think about this book. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you would like notifications about whenever we post. So we also have an Instagram and Facebook now. Instagram is at D's Nerds and Facebook is also D's Nerds. So come and find us, interact. We'd love to talk to you. And with that, let's get started. So here is the new book that came out exactly a week ago. And this is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And this is a prequel novel that takes place 64 years before the first Hunger Games novel. And so it takes place at the 10th Hunger Games. So I'm going to start out by giving you some thoughts on this. Actually, I'm going to start out by giving you a summary, but then I'm going to give you some non-spoiler thoughts. And then I promise to warn you before I start giving you any spoilers so you can stop the video if you need to. So basic summary of this book is that this book is about President Snow when he was still a teenager. So his name is Coriolanus Snow. He's 18 years old and he is still a student at the academy in the capital. And he's just getting ready to graduate and it's time for the 10th Hunger Games. And this year the Capitol has decided that it would be wise to give the victors or the tributes rather mentors in the games for the very first time. But as they have, they've not planned ahead for this, they're not using previous victors as they do, as we know later in the book, in the original books. At this point, they're using capital, capital kids to help mentor the kids from the districts. And so he is supposed to be one of those mentors. Now, the other thing you have to know is that the Snow family has struggled because it's only been 10 years since the war. And in the war, they were one of the families that just didn't come out all that well in the end. They had been one of the really, really high ranking, important families in the capital up until this point. And they had pretty well hidden the fact that they were struggling, but they didn't have a lot to eat. His clothes were tattered and ratty. And he was just trying to make his way through the academy, get into university, and hopefully make something of himself so he could reclaim the former glory for his family. So his expectation, because he's an extremely good student, and because he's from an important family, that he's going to get assigned a really important district. And so he's thinking he's going to get one of what we know later as a career. He's going to get District 1, District 2, District 4, and I believe they actually mentioned District 11 as being more of a career type in this because they took care of crops and at the time I suppose restrictions were less and they had more to eat there than other places did. So he's hoping for an important district and when he keeps getting passed by and passed by and passed by and his name doesn't come up he's aggravated and frustrated and doesn't understand when he gets assigned the district 12 female. He's just not happy at all. So that's basically where we're left as far as summary goes. That's the premise of what's going on is he has to mentor this District 12 girl who he's sure is just going to die as soon as these games start. So let me talk some about my non-spoiler thoughts about this first. And then, like I said, I will make sure to give you a nice big warning across the screen when it's time for spoilers. <laughs> so the first thing I thought about this is that it's really hard to make a character sympathetic that you know eventually turns out to be the bad guy. But I think Susan Collins did a wonderful job in this book of making you care about Coriolanus Snow because you're with him on this journey where he's not really a bad guy to start with. His ambition is based in trying to revive his family's import, you know, right, revive his family, revive his family's fortune and bring them back up to where they had been used to being and in the capital that wasn't such a crazy thought that wasn't misplaced that wasn't really selfish he was he was doing something for his family and so she does a really good job of making him sympathetic in that respect and then as things go on you still feel for him and he has to make some really difficult decisions and there are times when he makes a decision that you would hope that he would make. And then there are times that he makes the decision that you can see are leading him toward becoming who we know him to be when he interacts with Katniss in the 74th and 75th Hunger Games. The other thing is in this book, because we are seeing things 64 years before the first book, that 
things are really different, much more different than I honestly expected them to be. And I guess I just hadn't really considered that 64 years before was only 10 years after this massive world destroying war that they were having to recover from. And so not only are the games themselves extremely different, I would say just the world in general is different. It seems as though at that point they hadn't quite tightened everything to the strict level of strictness and craziness that we see in the original books. Things are still more fluid and loosey-goosey and just, you know, simpler. Um, the peacekeepers don't have the same relationship with the districts, it seems, as they do later on. The capital doesn't seem quite as strict on things as they will later. And the capital also doesn't seem as extreme. We don't see all the extreme cosmetic surgeries and everything at this point. It, everyone still seems pretty normal. So that's definitely a departure from what we know in those later books. Um, some of the other things that are interesting, and I won't spoil these specifically, so I'm just going to say in general for now, that we do actually get to see some origins of some things that were really significant in The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay that we see now how they became something and I think that was really cool because there were things that there were things that I just didn't expect to ever get an answer to or didn't really know that I even wanted an answer to until I got it and this book has so much more significance to things that happened later than I could have ever imagined because so many things are being put into play at this point in the 10th Hunger Games. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to give some spoilers. So right here, spoiler alert. If you do not want spoilers for this book, you have to put, put pa hit pause, hit mute, close the, cl close the screen, whatever you're gonna do in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, spoilers now. Okay, so first thing, I don't know if this really counts as a spoiler because you get it like two two pages into the book, but Tigress, who we meet in Mockingjay originally, is actually Coriolanus Snow's cousin, and he lives with her, and they the two of them live with their with her with their grandma, um, as they've both been left with no parents. And so that immediately was like a whoa, because we know that Tigress was ejected from being a stylist in the games because she had done too much cosmetic surgery to so that she didn't fit the capital standards of what was beautiful anymore and I would have never imagined that the two of them are related so it was really cool to get to see that relationship and what it used to be before the two of them became essentially estranged. There sorry I lost my train of thought we're good okay <laughs> so um there is what I a, a similar dynamic between some of the characters in this book I would say and I'm not sure exactly how I want to put this but there's Snow himself, and then there's all these other capital kids that you see around him. But there's one kid named Sejanus. I'm going to assume that's how you say his name, and if it's not, someone please correct me. But he actually is a kid from District 2 whose parents made enough money that they were able to buy their way into the capital and become capital people. But the capital people don't really necessarily see things that way. They think once district, always district. And Sejanus himself would really rather go back home. But his reactions to things throughout this book, to me, seem very PETA-like. I feel like he's that character who wants to stand up for the weak, who doesn't want to be manipulated, who doesn't want any part of the games, who wants to still be himself at all costs. And I think, unfortunately, he takes a darker turn with things than PETA does. But to me, that, that mindset that he has reminds me a lot of PETA from the originals. So talking about some of the things I mentioned in the non-spoiler section of this that you get origins for, the songs that are really significant in the original books. So the Hanging Tree songs that Katniss sings was written by Lucy Gray, and she sings it for the first time in the book. And Lucy Gray is uh, Snow's tribute, by the way, if you hadn't caught that. But I'm assuming if you're here, you probably already read it if you're wanting spoiler thoughts. Uh, and then the song Deep in the Meadow Under the Willow that Katna sings for Rue, Lucy Gray also sings to her, another girl in her like singing, performing troupe that she's in. And she sings it for her when she wants, needs her to go to sleep or needs her to relax. 
So it was really interesting to see the origins of a couple of songs because I assumed that music would come into this being that it's the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I also realized that it could have just been a Mockingjay thing. And as it happens, Mockingjays also play a role in this. Not in the same way as in the original books, but there's something that Snow encounters and finds extremely distasteful and make him uncomfortable. So much so that he suggests that they start getting rid of them and shooting them for target practice <laughs> to get rid of them. Um, the other thing that blew my mind, which is actually where he was suggesting this target practice, is that he ends up being a peacekeeper in this book. Like, what? We're talking about this hoity-toity guy who is president later and it has all this control, ends up as a peacekeeper. So I thought it was really interesting that, I mean, you you... I feel like, I don't know, I, I expected that, you know, he was going to get his tribute through the games and that is what happens. Again, you came here for the spoiler section, so I'm not telling you anything you didn't come here for. <laughs> but he gets her through this, through this and then because of how they went about it, he ends up getting ejected from school and it's suggested, suggested that he become a peacekeeper and because Lucy is from District 12 and he wants to go be with her he actually asks to go to District 12 as a peacekeeper. So we know that we know that Snow has a particular distaste for for especially those what we the outlying districts the districts that are furthest from him and I think now with what happens in this book, you can see why those places carry some pretty bad memories for him for what happens. The ending of this book with Lucy Gray, I'm still not sure I know what happened. <laughs> so she and, and Snow run off together. They go down to the lake where Katniss actually goes with her father later on and then with Gail and where she meets Bonnie and Twill and all these other things that happen in the in the main series that were really important. They go back to that same lake, they're trying to escape, they're gonna go north, they're going to get out, and she leaves him and he realizes it and he goes after her because he at the same time is realizing that he can't live his life that way. He needs the comfort of the capital and he needs the the creature comforts he can't live out in the woods and do all of these things he can't stand it he's he talks about how he could stand it you know just for for the fun for a day but not to actually live that way it's like she's coming to this realization about him as he's coming to this realization about himself and she runs off but we never get a clear explanation as to why um just that she leaves and then he goes back and ends up right back in the capital um so uh, the ending to me was really mind blowing. Now, overall, I thought this book was great. I've seen some pretty mixed reviews on it for various reasons, but to me, this was, this was such a cool book. So this is where the spoiler part ends. <laughs> no more spoilers from this point. So this book, I thought I gave a five star. I loved the original trilogy. I thought this added so much to it and was so interesting because I think it's always interesting to delve deeper in the mind of your villains, especially if you can go back to why they are the way that they are. So definitely recommend this for a read, especially if you're a fan of the original series. There are some, there are some nods to the originals, although you could absolutely read this had you not ever read the rest of them. If you've ever seen the movies, you can do this without having actually read books. You could probably just do movies and do this. Now, having mentioned movies, they are supposed to already be making a movie for this. Like as soon as this book got announced, somebody said, we're making a movie. <laughs> so I don't know when we're gonna get that with everything going on right now, but I'm definitely excited to see a young Snow and Lucy Gray and Sejanus and all of these other characters um, come to life on film, just like I did with the originals. So with that, like I said, five star review from me. And don't forget, if you liked this review, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from us and ring the bell if you want to know whenever we post a video. It was good talking to you. Good night, nerds. Bye.